Hello, everyone. This is Shukura Zoya Goku, aka Chigomint, and welcome to a new series called Spectral Fantasy. This is our submission for the Spooktober Fourth Annual Vision Award Jam on Each Dot Io. It's our little spooky dating scene about a friendly ghost boy for just for Halloween. Of course, the series for the meeting in the flesh is not completely finished, but I thought it would be a nice little intermission between the series, since there's a lot of plenty words in the meeting in the flesh series, and this one is much shorter. So a little pause in、um, the series, I'd say. And now let's see what it is all about. Warning: Your choices have an effect on the outcome of the game. Please consider carefully. Of course, this is because since it is for the spooky、uh, jam, it is going to be something horrorish. So, guarantee spooky stuff. What's your name? I wonder if our antagonists have a default name. Let's see. This was probably a terrible idea. You sang to yourself as you clicked the lock button on your keys and gave one final rhyme miss to the source of your current predicament. You had been driving home for a get together at your friend's house when your car had started making an awful riding noise akin to a broken chainsaw. Causing you to pull over before your engine caught fire or something. No, do not start thinking about the chainsaws right now when you're currently stranded in the middle of the goddamn woods at one in the morning. You really should stop watching so many horror movies. You're enough of a paranoid person as is. Pulling out the second source of grief out of your pocket, you check one final time to see the no surface icon flashing at the top of your phone screen. Of course, your first instinct was to call someone to come pick you up and save you from this nightmare you found yourself in. But those hopes had been dashed quickly. The stretch of forest between your town and the, and the neighboring one your friend lives in is notorious for being a dead zone. Oh, figures this is where your traitorous car would choose to break down. With another heavy sign, you start your trek along the side of the road. You had debated sleeping in your car until the morning, but you knew your town was only a few miles from the current location, and it wouldn't take you a ridiculously long time to make it there. Besides, it's not like you suddenly have soft slippers in the morning, anyways. You have to walk one way or another. Terrible idea, indeed. However, despite your present circumstance, it truly was a beautiful autumn night. The night sky was free of any clouds, allowing moonlight to illuminate the road ahead of you and eliminated the need for the emergency flashlight you had brought from the trunk of your car before you had left. It was easy to get lost in admiring the way the moonlight filtered in through the trees around you, or just how many stars were glittering in the sky above. There was, there were worse nights your car could have chosen to break down. Still, though, you were currently stuck walking along the road in the middle of the forest. Give and take. It was so easy to get caught up in stargazing. In fact, that you nearly jumped straight out of your skin and had to slap a hand over your mouth to stifle a small shriek when you heard a stick crack in the woods off to your side. That was fine. It's the woods. There's nothing no animals. Noses are normal. You repeated that to yourself like a mantra as you continued your hike, now on high alert to the various sounds from the trees on either side of the road. Every time a branch would break or rustling could be heard from the dense underbrush, your walking would speed up until you were nearly jogging. Your heart was hammering near painfully in your chest as paranoia ran rampant, rampant in your mind of all the terrible things that could eat. That could be lurking just out of sight in the trees around you. Just as you were about to call it quits and run screaming back to your car, you saw a break in the trees just ahead of you. That's right, you almost forgot. 
It was a decently popular urban legend amongst the teens in your town, and you were used to hearing stories about it growing up from kids you went to school with. Ryan Wood Manor, a giant Victorian-era mansion that's been left abandoned in the forest, but you own town for God knows how many decades now. No one knows who owns it, nor has anyone seen any for sale signs outside it, to your knowledge. According to the legend, the manor is haunted. You know, like every other abandoned mansion there is on the planet. There is simply a fact of life. Grass is green, the sky is blue, and abandoned mansions are haunted. It's not uncommon for teenagers to dare each other to spend a night in Briarwood Manor. One of your classmates even took up the challenge after his friend had bet him $20 that he couldn't last the night. From what he heard, he didn't even last an hour before he was running out the front doors. You weren't incredibly superstitious yourself. So you weren't even terribly concerned with the manner. If anything, it would be fun to investigate from an urban exploration perspective. Well, apparently that time is now. You'd much rather take your chances waiting out the night in the manor rather than endure another minute of your brain. Lego and you with images of mountain lions charging at you from the trees to rip your throat out. After briskly turning onto the dirt path. You could already see the looming shape of the manor from between the gaps in the trees. Do you slip your way through the gap in the crusted iron gates that mark the entrance to the property? The metal emitted a shrill screech into the darkness around you, causing you to wince. It was impossible to not to acknowledge the beauty of the manor now that you were standing right in front of it. Modern buildings truly do pale in comparison to architecture like this. Every little detail, all the way from the intricate designs carved into the wooden doors to the elegant scribbling metal of the porch railing, had clear love poured into their creation, and also a lot of money. It's a shame it's abandoned, you thought. Left to rot out here in the woods like this. You love to call a place like this your home. But what about the cleaning process? I'm pretty sure it's a lot of trouble cleaning up a giant place like this. If you have money, of course. If you have money, you can hire some servants or something like that. Well, after some mature repairs and TLC, that is. Ain't money. Ain't people. Ain't cleaners. As beautiful as the manor was, there was no closing over the fact that most of the visible windows were either cracked or shattered completely. Wooden plants had been haphazardly nailed across the broken windows, moss growing moss and showing clear signs of weathering. No one had come here to perform maintenance in a very long time, it seemed. After making your way up to the cracked stone stairs, you find yourself standing in front of the doors to Briarwood Manor and are suddenly hit with a new wave of apprehension. Were you really going to do this? It still wasn't too late to go back and sleep in your car until the morning. But that required making the hike all the way back through the dreaded forest that put you on the front porch to the manor to begin with. Now, why were you getting anxious for anyways? Teenagers come here all the time and no one has ever gotten hurt to your knowledge. Besides, ghosts weren't real. Just a bunch of dumb stories kids tell each other to get scared for fun. Alright, you know the mental gymnastics with yourself. You're going in. Much to your surprise, the front doors weren't open with relative ease. The ancient hinges gave a groan and brought us, announcing your presence to the empty manor. Huh. You were expecting the front doors to be locked. Though at the same time, you really didn't feel like looking for another entrance by holding yourself through a window or something. You pull the emergency flashlight out of your backpack and click it on. The beam of light flickering precariously a few times before mercifully staying on. Taking your first few hesitant steps in the manor, 
Use with the flashlight sperm around the room and survey your surroundings. The room you find yourself in seems to be the foyer. A large wooden double staircase can be seen at the back of the spacious room, leading up to what seems to be a small landing. At the base of the staircase, there are set up double doors, which presumably lead to the rest of the first floor. There isn't much furniture in this room, just a small settee and a few tables placed here and there. However, a large, elegantly carved mirror in the corner of the room does give you a fright when your flashlight beam passes over it, causing the glass to flash back at you. It is rather impressive that this place seems completely untouched, you think to yourself. There's no graffiti like you expected to find from such a popular teen hangout spot, and even weirder is that all the furniture is still here. Surely such nice antique pieces would fetch a decent price to sell. What doesn't surprise you, however, is the sheer amount of dust. Every visible surface is coated in a thick blanket of it, and dust moles can be seen floating lazily through the air in the silver beams of moonlight streaming through the windows. You can even make out footprints in the dust on the floor from previous visitors. Well, since you were stuck here for the rest of the night, you might as well explore a bit more. Where to first? I'm not sure. Maybe uh, explore downstairs first? Let's check that out. Enter the setup doors between the setup stairs. Your hand turns the elegantly shaped metal handle of one of the double doors and it squints inwards to review a long, dark hallway that leads farther into the manor. The walls of the hallway are lined with scrunches, surprisingly still holding half-burned candlesticks, and the wooden floor is covered with an elegant-looking red carpet. More wooden doors, similar to the ones you just entered, are spaced evenly down both sides of the hallway. There looks to be six rooms in total. Wow, this place is massive. Rich people are on a whole other level. You try the door knobs as you make your way down the hall. Odd. All of the rooms so far are locked. Just as you reach down for the door knob of one of the last rooms in the hall, you hear a wooden clattering sound from beside you, causing your entire body to jump in surprise. Quickly spinning around, you see the source of the noise. One of the large frame paintings that had been decorating the wall of the hallway had fallen to the floor. It's not entirely outside the realm of possibilities, you suppose. Brightwood Manor was ancient, after all. You walking around probably just disturbed it enough to fall off its hook. A nice rational explanation. No way were you going to buy into all the ghost cool stories about this place. Your paranoia would drive you to insanity if you started thinking like that. You turned your attention back to the door in front of you, and once again reached out to try the doorknob. Oh, it's not locked. The door squints open easily and you step inside, sweeping your flashlight around the room. It looks like a large dining room. There's a long wooden table in the center of the room, with matching chairs arranged around it. Definitely bigger than any dining room you've been in before. A beautiful crystal chandelier hangs above the table, candles still present in the holders. You pull out the chair at the head of the table and take a seat, imagining that would be light to have dinner in such a fancy room. What a gorgeous place to have a meal. Suddenly, your eye catches movement from the far end of the room and your head snaps up to look. Oh, it was the trees framing one of the windows. You can spot a large hole in the glass, so it was probably just the breeze. You let out the breath you didn't even realize you were holding, and try to will your heartbeat to return to a normal level. Jeez, look at you getting all worked up like this. The stories about this place were really getting to you, apparently.
Okay, so uh, as you can see earlier, that the name didn't pop up, so there's no default name for all protagonists. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to this and type my name in, which is Shokura. Whoops. Yeah, Panda Shokura. It's just an old house. Pulling out your phone, you briefly check to see you still don't have any luck with service before opening up an app. Might as well relax here for a bit while you wait for morning. A few minutes go by and you're fully absorbed in your phone. So when you suddenly hear a short series of wooden creaking noise from behind you, you drop your phone in surprise and it clatters loudly onto the table. Giving the room a quick scan, you don't see anything out of place. Maybe it was just the house settling. Houses do that, right? Slowly, you reach for your phone and slide it back into your pocket while you wait to see if you hear anything else. There it was again. A sharp pain of fear grips the chest as you realize what the noise sounded like. It wasn't just the foundation creaking. It sounded exactly like quick footsteps running across the wooden floor. In an instant, you sprint to your feet and pulled out of the room and back into the hallway before slamming the door behind you. Nope, absolutely not dealing with that. You stay there in the hallway watching the door for a few minutes until you're convinced nothing is going to chase you. Maybe you just thought it sounded like footsteps. Ah, uh, your paranoia is acting up again. You're letting yourself get all worked up for running. Though, maybe a change of scenery would do you some good. You find another unlocked door down the hallway from the dining room and step inside. It seems to be a comfortable parlor room. Lush looking velvet chairs and couches are arranged around a wooden table in the center of the room. Much to your surprise, there was even a tea set displayed neatly on the table. Most of the walls are covered in large windows, branched by heavy velvet drapes, allowing moonlight to shine and illuminate the room better. But as you hang out in this room for the night and wait for money, it's very inviting. A good place to relax and get your mind off of the events from the dining room. You make your way over to one of the couches and brush aside some of the dust before making yourself comfortable. The couches very bit are soft as it looked. As you go to admire the room some more, your flashlight beam all of a sudden starts to flicker. Oh. Ah, uh, stupid old thing. You knew it wasn't going to last the whole night. You slap the plastic side of it a few times before it miraculously decides to stay on. Nice. Thank god. Oh. As they on cue, the beam cuts out. Before you even had a chance to smack it again, your attention snaps to the table in front of you in an instant. Did that teacup just move? You stared at it intently for a few moments before rolling your eyes with a sigh. This face is really messing with your head. It's just an old mansion. There's no such thing as ghosts. Uh Oh, okay, yep, this there's a ghost, alright. Um, rush that the teacup is floating. You feel your chest tighten up in fear as you sit there, too paralyzed by terror to move, as the teacup hovers innocently a few inches above the table in front of you. Helpless to do anything but watch. You stare why I did as the teacup lazily floats closer to you until it's right in front of your face. Then just as suddenly as it happened, the teacup drops harmlessly onto your lap. Before your poor panic stricken brain even had a chance to process what just happened, you heard an echoing laugh ring out into the room, causing the blood in your veins to turn to ice. That's it, your stay in the mansion is officially over. You really regret giving your classmates so much shy for buying into all the ghost stories about Brian Wood Manor back when you were still in school. 
Maybe if you had believed them, you wouldn't be in this situation right now. Without waiting to see what other nightmare Brian Wood Manor had in store for you, you jumped to your feet and scrambled to get to the door. No, 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 no. It's locked. Just like a horror story. You uselessly try and turn the doorknob as your brain starts trying to work out another way out of the room. This is the first floor. You could probably throw something to break a window and plumb out. You spare a brief glance down the useless flashlight stuck clutch in your hand. That could work. What? You're not in the mood for tea? A voice calls out from somewhere in the room behind you. Amusement clearly evident in its tone, ripping you out of your tongues and sending a chill down your spine. Um, <laughs> I am tempted. Let's do it. Then throw the flash at the source of the voice. You quickly turn on your hue and muster up all the strength you can manage despite your fear and whip the flashlight at the figure now present in the room with you. Sad so figure is our shock cry and that's just moments before the flashlight goes sailing above his head and smashes into the wall. What is wrong with you? Oh. That's not the terrifying ghost your brain was imagining and it's paranoia. The figure crouched on the floor in front of you looks like an ordinary boy, probably close to your age if you had to guess. The only thing off about him is the sickly pallor of his skin and the slight transparency quality to his form. He is giving you a wide-eyed, incredulous look, seemingly waiting on an answer from you. Oh, um, I thought you were going to kill me. It was self-defense. And now a cough blows your mouth as you answer Landy. What? No, I wasn't going to kill you. I don't even want to hurt you. Hmm, interesting attire. Also, I noticed there uh, something on his neck. A bandages? I just wanted to have a little fun and scare you a bit, is all. The ghost looks at the wall and stands to himself before turning his gaze back to you with an apologetic smile on his face. I'm sorry, let me start over. I'm sorry. He holds out a slightly see-through hand for you to shake. <laughs> okay, escape or shake his hand. This is dumb. The a very dumb decision, but let's do it. I mean, the goat's boy is cute, you know. If he's not trying to kill us, then it's alright. Let's shake the hand. You reach down and grab Cypress' hand in your own. The contrast of his cold skin against yours sends a shiver up your arm. I'm Shokura. He brings himself immediately and happily shakes your hand before letting go. Oh uh, wait, you guys can touch each other? That's interesting. But then again, maybe goes in this group can touch humans, so who knows. Nice to meet you. And again, I'm sorry if I scare you too badly. It's just been so long since I've had a visitor. I got a bit overexcited. He lets out an overlap and rubs the back of his neck. I could have gotten hurt. Apology accepted. It's fine. No harm done. Well, uh, physical harm at least. My mental state has definitely taken a few blows. You chuckle and give him a grin of your own to ease any leftover tension in the room, and you're pleased to hear him laugh along with you. Jeez, to think this is. To think this was the big scary ghost who was so terrifying to have not even 10 minutes ago. I mean, he could be scary if he wanted to. So, you like scaring people for fun? I'm a ghost. That's kind of old thing, isn't it? A phone smile appears on his face as he continues. I mean... Most of the visitors I get are people looking to get scared. I like putting on a good show for them. Oh, he knows. 
That did make sense, you supposed. Given all the urban legends about Briarwood Manor, teens, teens purposely came here with the hopes of getting scared. It was practically like a Halloween attraction. It's fine for me too. It gets boring here. The ghost voice took on a bit of tone as he kept his eyes downcast, and you could sense there was more to it than that. That's why I try to keep the stories going. So people tell their friends and I get more visitors. Cyrus, are you lonely? Cyrus' head abruptly snapped up to stare at you with bright eyes before he seemed to quickly recover and let out a small laugh. Lonely? Of course not. I'm a ghost. Being alone is kind of a thing. He weighed up your question with another hour laugh and coughed into his fist to compose himself. Besides, I have the people that visit to keep me company. Even if only one or two people visit a month, or that only a handful over the decades have ever stayed to talk with me after I've revealed myself. I'm definitely not bothered when I say hi and they run screaming out the front door. No, but no at all. So, basically what you're telling me is that you're lonely. He brings his hands up to cover his face and muffles a small scream into them before peeking at you from above his fingers. Is that obvious? It was impossible to stop a tiny grin from forming on your face at his actions. To think, this was the best scary ghost you were running for your life from not even 20 minutes ago. He was kinda cute like this. I think most people would be lonely in your situation. I know I wouldn't be able to handle it. Are you not able to leave the mansion then? This caused an annoyed frown to cross first Cyrus' face as he crosses his arms. No, my spirit is confined to the property. I've come to the conclusion that it's because I died here. He throws his arms up in frustration. I don't know. It's not like I have a handy little handbook that tells me about how to be a ghost. Hmm. You tap a finger to your chin, wondering where you could go from here. You only find yourself wanting to cheer him up. The sheer irony. Like, yeah, he scared the hell out of you and nearly gave you a heart attack, but he clearly isn't a bad person. Just lonely. You couldn't imagine being alone for as long as Cyrus has. He can't even leave and go explore the world. Begin. Being a ghost sucks. Oh, if you can't leave, then how about you show me around the mansion? Where do you like to hang out? Cyrus stares at you then furtively for a few moments before his suspicion mounts into a huge smile. Really? If you're really interested, I could show you the library. It's my favorite room in the whole mansion. Imagine smile makes its way onto your face as you gesture towards the door and nod. This face had a personal library. That's awesome. He loves books, especially antique ones. Lead the way! Cyrus eagerly makes his way to the door and instead of opening it, his body passes right through the wood. Right. Ghost. Not even a moment later, the door swings open to review a clearly flustered Cypress. His spell cheeks are even tinted a tiny bit red. Oh, that's adorable. Sorry, full stop habit. Follow me. The two of you walk back down the hall where you initially came in from and throw the double doors back into the foyer. He leads you up the staircase and you take a moment to admire the foyer from your higher vantage point. Cyrus leans on the railing next to you and shoots you an easy grin. Really, right? When I was a kid, one of my favorite things to do was sliding down the staircase railings. My parents hated it. You nod before looking over to meet his eyes. 
You grew up here? Mm-hmm. Lived here my entire life. Well, an afterlife now, I suppose. It'll be a lie to say you weren't curious about his past, but you didn't want to bright right now. Properly consider rude to ask a ghost what their life was like before they... Well, you know. Anyways, the library is right down this hallway. You follow Cyrus in silence. Neither one of you saying anything until you reach another beautifully carved wooden door down the hall. Everything in this manner must cost a fortune. You wonder if Cyrus will let you take a base home to be off your student loans. Um, oh, oh my. Here we are. He turns the door open to review the library. It was huge. Nearly every available wall was lined with bookshelves, full of more volumes than you could ever hope to count. The sizable stone fireplace was nestled between two of the bookshelves, with two soft looking velvet couches facing each other in front of it. A perfect place to relax with a good book. Cyrus stood back in the doorway and smiled as he watched you slowly walk around the room and admire everything. You walk up to one of the massive bookshelves and run your fingertips along the spine of one of the books and all. This is amazing. I've never been inside a private library. Oh, here. Let me make it a little more welcoming in here. In a flash, a roaring fire is going in the fireplace and you quickly turn to stare at Cyrus with your mouth agape. He sends a smug smirk your way in return. Ghost power, I've had a lot of time to learn. Though I rarely bother with candles or the fireplace, I can see in the dark just fine. Anyways, he claps his hands together. I've got a deal for you. I'll let you take any of the books you want. And in a strange, you have to tell me more about yourself. He shows you a playful grin and gestures to the bookshop you were admiring a second ago. I saw how your face lit up looking at everything. Pretty good you, right? Hmm, I suppose I can agree to those terms. What do you want to know? Anything you want to share. Though, I am curious how you ended up here in my home to begin with. Here, come get comfortable. He moves to sit down on one of the couches in front of the fireplace and gestures to the other couch opposite him. Send in a welcoming smile your way. Stay standing or sit, up, sit down across from him. Returning his smile, you sit down on the couch across from him, the plush cushion sinking comfortably under you. So, you want to know how I ended up here, right? Cyrus nods eagerly. Of course, you're the first visitor I've had in. He draws up. Mumbling numbers under his breath before waving his hand. Never mind, it doesn't matter. You're the first in a long time that hasn't run out the front door in fear by this point. So I'd love to hear more about you. I clearly don't get out much. You politely declined to mention that you did in fact try to run out the door in fear. You don't want to hurt his feelings. Well, for starters, you explained all about how your traitorous car broke down and how you had a paranoia filled hike along the side of the road until you ended up at the Briarwood Manor's front gates. I figured an abandoned mansion would be a better place to wait out the night rather than run all the way back to my car. An hour love escapes you as you finish recounting the events of the night. It sounds ridiculous now that you're saying it out loud to someone. So, you willingly came to a known haunted mansion because you were afraid of some completely normal noises in the woods? Immediately, your hands come up to cover your face and you let out an embarrassed scream. Ah, someone kill you now! I thought I was going to get mauled by a bear or something. That's a completely natural reaction. You know what? I think I'd rather you be a scary, murderous rose. Please, and my pitiful assistance. 
his cause address to burst into laughter and whole signs. He tried to speak several times, but can't manage to get any words out. He comes down after a few moments and wipes a tear from his eyes. I I'm sorry. Really. I haven't joked with someone like this since forever. You understand. Please, continue. Do you find a glare at him before continuing with your conversation? The two of you talk for a long time, discussing your life, how you spend your days, what your hobbies are, even your favorite ice cream flavor. You don't even talk to your friends about your personal life this much. For whatever reason, talking to Cyrus is easy. Maybe because he's a ghost and doesn't get to experience everyday life anymore? What a sad existence. Cyrus listens intently the entire time. He seems genuinely interested in your life and how things are in the outside world, asking questions here and there about various things. When you run out of things to talk about, he chuckles and gestures to the rest of the library. Well, I'll say you more than earned the books. Thank you for sharing with me. I really enjoyed hearing about everything. He goes quiet for a moment, seeming to be lost in thoughts before his red eyes beat yours. Would you like to hear about me in return? I'll answer any questions you have. I'm not really interested. As long as you don't mind. Of course I don't mind. You were kind enough to talk about yourself for this long. That's the least I can do. Alright okay, then, for starters. How did you die? What was your life like when you were alive? I'm really curious about the time period you were alive in. I could honestly go on for hours about it. Things are so different now compared to back then. It really is amazing how much changes in nearly 200 years. He talks for a long time about all the changes he witnessed. Electricity becoming widely used, and subsequently all the rapid changes in technology with it. To your surprise, he knows all about cell phones thanks to previous visitors. He talks about the amazing advancements made in medicine and how illness that were considered a death sentence in his time were easily treatable now, or nearly wiped out completely. I think my favorite thing is the music. I mean, you have hundreds of songs right at your fingertips. It's amazing. Things are so different back then. Do you want to hear some? You hold up your phone and wave it eagerly, and you please to see his face light up. You don't mind? It's been so long since I've heard music I didn't play myself. Of course. Any preference? I don't even know what I would ask for. Why don't you play me some of your favorite songs? A warm smile crosses your face as you nod and start a playlist with all of your favorites. The two of you sit there in silence for a while, enjoying the music. Cyprus especially seems pleased. He looks adorable smiling so happily like that, you think to yourself. You feel your face heat up slightly, realizing what you just thought about him. Thank you so much, that was wonderful. I love your music. If you want, I could play my violin or piano for you later. So was there anything else you wanted to know? Um, how did you die? If that's too uncomfortable of a topic, you don't have to answer. Cypress is quick to put a hand up to stop you. No, no, it's fine. After this long, I don't mind discussing that topic anymore. There was a time where I wouldn't have wanted to even think about the fact I was dead. I was bitter and resentful about it for a long time. I mean, here I am stuck. Helpless to do anything as I'm forced to watch my family grieve my death. He takes a shaky breath to steady himself and pauses for a few moments before he continues. I tried so hard to communicate with them. I didn't get a hold of my new abilities until long after they had moved out and left me. For a moment, you were worried he was going to break down right then and there. 
this topic was clearly not something he was comfortable talking about. Just as you opened your mouth to stop him, he started talking again. His soft voice now taking on a resentful tone. I used to take it out on potential buyers for the manor after my family moved out and sold it. He narrows his eyes and stares at the fireplace as he continues. I never hurt anyone, but I always made sure to scare them so badly they never come back. That's why no one ever bought it. I couldn't handle seeing my family move on without me, and new people move into my home. You two sit in silence as you try and find the right words to say to him. I don't think I would have reacted any better, honestly. I can't even imagine everything you went through. I'm sorry, Cyrus. His expression softens as he regards you. You're a sweet person, Shokura. Thank you. He takes a moment to gather his thoughts before continuing. I died of scarlet fever in 1862. One of the maids caught it, and it ended up spreading throughout the manor staff before it finally came to me. I. Didn't even last two nights. My parents called in every doctor in the town to try and save me, but I was nineteen. I should have been old enough to fight it off. It was only supposed to be fatal to children. A bitter laugh escapes his lips, and you overcome with a strong urge to comfort him. Sit next to him, hug him. Come on, hug, hug, hug. Without a word. You move from your spot and take a seat next to him on the couch before quickly wrapping your arms around him. You feel Cyrus tense up in your arms as his hands rub the hem of his sweater. You don't have to keep talking about this if you don't want to. Suddenly, you feel Cyrus' arms wrap around you as he returns your hug. You give him a soft squeeze before letting go. As you meet his eyes, you see that he's holding back tears. But his lips are curved into a grateful smile. Thank you. I really did think I'd be fine talking about it. I'm sorry. I promise I'm fine now. Was there anything else you'd like to ask me? No, I think I'm good on questions now. He nods before reaching his arms up in a stretch. Well, if you're curious about anything else, don't hesitate to ask. Sure, some guess for you about me. Thanks, I appreciate it. So, how about we continue our tour? I can show you another room if you like. Sounds good. I like that. Cyrus grins as he hops up off the couch and holds the door to the library open for you. After you, my dear. A small flush crawls up your cheeks as the choking words, and you quickly make your way out into the hallway. Oh my God! No, you are not going to start crushing on a ghost, even if he was really cute. You weren't lying, Tyrus. Oblivious to the brief mental battle you're having with yourself and your thirst, walks past you and leads the way down to the hall until he reaches another door. Just a second. His spectral form glides through the closed door, and you hear the lock click from the inside before the door swings open, and he once again holds it open for you. Oh, do you mind if I ask why so many of the doors seem to be locked? It's just because there are rooms I don't want people going into when they visit. Some have sentimental things I want to keep from getting broken. Others are just too much of a mess to let anyone in. He grins sheepishly as you walk past him into the newly opened room. This one seems to be a cozy little sitting room. More velvet furniture is placed around the room with teak tables scattered here and there. And that should be a good pause in our playthrough of Spectral Fantasy. So、uh, we actually this time we、uh, got into an actual haunted mansion and meet a ghost. A cute ghost, in fact, a very, very, very cute ghost, who was quite, quite like Casper the ghost. So friendly, not、uh, murder, so it's fine. We talk a lot with him, and kind of, sort of develop a, a 
a crush, a little crush on a boy because it's cute and、um, we are thirsty. And next up, we will、uh, continue on our tour around the mansion. And I wonder what will happen next. Next time. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on the next playthrough of Spectral Fantasy. Bye bye.